Most of us are pretty familiar with the benefits of maintaining our physical health, but not a lot of us realize how important it is to stay financially fit as well. When you're in control of your finances, you can enjoy life better, not just today, but in the future. My name is Sam Oh, and today I'm hanging out with four, make up five people whom many consider as inspirations because of their passion for wellness but this afternoon we'd also like to hear about their tips on how to train to keep their finances healthy and thriving as well I'm very excited to meet our guests so let's get right to it first we have the owner of Bikram Yoga Manila Mr. Charles Chua is here hi Charles hello, hello Sam Green, Green Hills represent <laughs> my instructor as well okay we also have with us today the founder of KikaiRunner.com. That is a running blog, Noel de Guzman. Hi, Noel. Cheers, guys. Hi. How are you? Hello. He is a CrossFit trainer and a player for the Philippine Volcanoes. Kit Guerra is here. Hi, Kit. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. We also have a triathlete and financial advisor from Sun Life Financial, Ms. Rocio Pantaleon, is in studio with me right now. Hi, Rocio. Hi. Hi. Nice Hi. to have you. And then, a familiar face. He's a filmmaker and a fitness enthusiast. Joaquin Valdez is here. Hi, Hi. everybody. Hey, Rappler. Hi, hi. Good to have all of you with us this afternoon. And those of you watching at home or at work can also join our Hangout by sending in your questions via Rappler's Twitter. You can use the hashtag fit to live free. All right. Before we get to you know all of my questions and the discussion and stuff like that, I would first like to ask all of our guests um, on health or wealth. Okay? And I want you guys to choose between health and wealth. If you could choose just one, if you can, hold, if you can only have one, would you have health or wealth? For now, let's not do the oh, but I think we, we can have both. You know, first choice, health or wealth. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I think um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, health okay. um, because I don't think you can get wealth without health in the first place. As the saying goes, health is wealth. Yeah. You're, okay. Mm. You're okay. So Joaquin chooses health. Who wants to go next? What about Kit? Um, yeah, I think I actually agree with Joaquin. I think health actually directly benefits well. Um, I think they do go hand in hand. All right, fair enough. Uh, Charles? Same, same answer. Health, health first before wealth. It used to be wealth before health like five years ago, but I realized health is more important than wealth. Oh, interesting. Maybe we can get to that story later on. Later on, later on. All right. Uh, the ladies, Noel, health or wealth? Definitely going to agree that health is more important than wealth. I mean, you can have all the wealth in the world, but if you're too ill to enjoy it, sorry. Oh, okay. Rocio, health or wealth? Um, definitely health, because you need good health to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess everyone, this is unanimous, you know, health is wealth, as they say. But maybe as we go through our discussions today, we'll find out that you can have health and wealth at the same time. All right, so um, let's start with your stories on how you guys got into this whole fitness thing. Like, you're all obviously very passionate about health and fitness. Um, tell us how you got here. Who wants to go first? Joaquin, go ahead. <laughs> you have said Joaquin, you'll always go first. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with the uh, with, uh, Bikram instructor. <laughs> okay. um, well, you know what? I was always more interested in the arts. Uh, th that's why I'm a filmmaker now. But, but um, uh, my interest in uh, fitness and in sports really came a little bit late. Uh, I only started getting into outdoor sports. Um, in college, uh, I was not necessarily the jock or the athletic type back in high school. In fact, I would get bullied. I was more of the the guy that was most interested in the arts and culture, um, in reading books, and in um, in painting rather than playing basketball in the court. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I got into UP that I I started to explore um, just you know my sense of body and my sense of physiology. And uh, really exploring outdoor stuff, playing ultimate frisbee, dragon boat rowing, rock climbing, and I think I got into it because I enjoyed it first and enjoyed later on what it did to my body before realizing that, oh, this is something I really wanted to explore and uh, be serious about. So it came a little bit late. 
I, and I, I think I forgot to mention earlier that you used to own um, a CrossFit box, right? Yeah, uh, co-own, yeah. Afternoon, right? With Kit. And um, it, it was a venture that I really jumped into because I fell in love with uh, CrossFit and what it aspired to be and what it did to people and, you know, making it making them fall in love with fitness and, you know, changing their, their mindset about what health and fitness is. And that's why I just joined in and uh, just fell in love with that culture and community. Okay. So um, let's go to Kit. You are currently a CrossFit trainer. Do you own, you know, these CrossFit boxes right now also? Um, I'm a partner, yeah, at a few of the CrossFit boxes. Um, okay. Yeah. So how, but let's go back to how you got into, you know, being an athlete and, you know, now you're a trainer. Like, how did you get to where you are today? What's your story? Okay, well, um, actually, from when I was born, my parents told me that I hit the ground running before I could walk. So I always ran before I walked. Um, I guess that shows you my interest in fitness in general. Um, since I was born up to maybe elementary school, I played soccer, I did track and field, I did a lot of uh, athletic things. And then um, I guess it was around high school that I picked up the sport of rugby and fell into it. And, you know, what goes hand in hand with every sport is fitness and, and well-being. I mean, you can't perform without being fit. Um, yeah. And I think that, that directly translates into, you know, being financially fit if you lead into that later on anyways. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, after that, I guess I, I fell in love with fitness. I fell in love with sports. And then I guess the next step was take a little bit further. It's, it's uh, taking your experience and transferring it on to others and passing on your knowledge to others so they can also be... Um, physically fit. Gotcha. Okay. And what about you, Charles? Now, because Charles is, you know, I actually go to the yoga studio that he owns, and, you know, we've talked about this a couple of times. I know, Charles, you actually started out on a field that had nothing to do with fitness, right? No, zero. I, uh, it's family business. I, I, we're, we were into textiles. Uh, I, I, and then uh, after graduation, I went to corporate world and into family business. And after that, uh, you know, all work, no play. Abuso sa katawan, and then yeah. the yoga helped me. I, I got back pains. I got I got uh, a, a weak knee, a weak leg. So the yoga really helped me. And after that, when I got hooked on yoga, I felt different. I felt better, and I keep on doing. I kept on doing it every day. But I started late, like 30, no, 28, 28. I started yoga 28. Okay. For that, I was like a couch potato, but I, I work. I mean, but but not nothing into fitness. Nothing to fitness. I see. Now, Noel, you know what's interesting about you is, you know, while we were off the air earlier, you were telling mm -hmm. me that you really were living a sedentary life before you got into the running, and now you know you have a blog mm -hmm. on running. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I was a very academically minded college student, so you know, it's just going to school, going to going back home, um, eat, sleep, and study, and I really was um, out of shape by the time I graduated. Um, and then my mom signed me up for a gym membership, and one thing led to another, and I, I started teaching group exercise classes, like dancing and yoga. But um, I really got into my stride when I started running, just basically because I wanted to get out of the four walls of the gym. And um, I was always a writer, so when I started writing about the races that I went through and people kind of just were, it was this big running boom happening at that time and people just got attracted to that. So that's how I got here. Mm -hmm. And Rocio, you are a triathlete, yes. right? <laughs> Um, I don't know what possesses somebody to, you know, get up one day and say, you know what, I'm going to bike and swim and run all at the same time. Yeah. How did it didn't how, happen yeah, that way. Okay, how did it happen? Well, I was always into sports. Ever since I was young, I was in the tennis team of my school. I got into golf, scuba diving. And then um, one day, it started with a blood test. I was abroad. I was waking up with a headache all the time. So... When I came home, I got this blood test, and it was really scary. So I got into running. Somebody referred to me, a coach. And um, he was the one who honed me into getting into running and biking at the same time. So since then, it was history. Wow. And then all yeah. the way to, because I hear you even uh, participated in an Ironman triathlon. Is yeah. that correct? Yes. That That's correct. Is Amazing. One in one in Kamsur and one in Cebu. Wow! So it yeah. it started with like a precautionary 
uh, cautionary tale rather. It started where with a health scare. issue, yeah. Right, right. A health right. scare, and then I got into doing all these races just because I was also um, invited to be in a team, and they also helped me become where I am now. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's um let's talk about the word healthy. You know, like that's a word I think that gets thrown around quite a bit. But what is your definition of healthy, and how do you you know, stay fit in the healthy that is your idea of healthy every day. Because now I think it's it's a bit, it's a lifestyle for you guys. You know, what does that day look like, Joaquin? Um, I well, you know what? It's uh, and I, when I was uh, also coaching at CrossFit, I would always tell the students, health starts with what you put into your body. Before I mean, it gets overwhelming with how much exercise you need to do. Or, you know, I want to have abs, I want to do this. And it, bottom line is, what are you putting into your body? Because everything else kind of uh, uh, reacts to that, you know. Um, uh, so I, we always start at nutrition. And uh, health is basically uh, how long you can actually live and what you're doing so that you can lengthen that duration. That's what I think. So are you when you say it's you know it's about what you put inside your body are you yeah. talking about diet more than exercise is that well, what I I don't like using the word diet so much because it connotes something that you're trying to uh, uh, cut down or avoid or not eat I always refer to it as nutrition mm -hmm. and uh, nutrition is basically what you put into your body and now I'm not going to be a you know a, holier than thou, than thou saying now don't do, don't eat this and eat this I'm you know we all get to enjoy what we like but we just have to be conscious about what goes into your body and then that's how you react as uh, you know in in your fitness lifestyle in your sleep in your stress and everything and it all reacts to that but health basically is how long you're trying to uh, extend your life I guess so you know it's an everyday effort for you to just yeah. be more conscious of yeah. your your food choices, yeah. is that how you keep healthy? Food choices, your choices of how long you're resting, um, how you uh, decide to affect, let your body get affected by stress, um, you know, it's all of these things. We're exposed to so many things that directly affect our health and it's, mm. it's, it's your conscious effort to kind of curb that or counter that or, you know, react to that. Or just, you know, if you decide to just say, I don't care what, you know, I'm just going to just sit down and not do anything about it. Kit, I feel like maybe you subscribe to a more hardcore definition of healthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are a CrossFit trainer. I mean, am I wrong? Oh, yeah, he's really, really tough on the floor, so. I'm tough on the floor, but I think, I think health in general, in terms of, you know, not as a as a professional athlete, is a, I agree with Joaquin in the fact that in health in general you're trying to basically build on yourself. Okay, so yeah. what I'm talking about is every individual, or if you think about yourself, you think of yourself as an asset. Okay, or you can think of yourself as a machine, for instance. Whatever you put in the machine, um, you can reap the benefits, or you you know you can um, make yourself worse. Okay, so let's say you put the wrong gas in in the in a, in a car, right? Like if you put it unleaded into a diesel car, it doesn't really work that way. Um, so whatever you put into it, you'll get out of it later on, right? So in terms of building on your own asset or building on yourself, you definitely improve your quality of life. And that, um, I guess, pushes on further into other aspects of your life. So health in general is not necessarily about being fit. It's more about, like Joaquin said, extending your own life. Okay, make yourself better. And how do you make sure that you're a well-oiled machine? You know, just everyday things that you do. Um, for instance, <laughs> uh, I like to take the stairs instead of the elevator. They're like little little tweaks that you could do instead of taking your car to go a few blocks down the road. You could walk instead of doing those things. You can eat the right meals. Um, just little tweaks that make your average day better. I mean, instead of going for those right. guys, maybe choose yourself a cup of fruit. Those type of things. Um, yeah. Okay. What about you, Charles? What is our definition of healthy? Oh, it's just being happy. From healthy. Yoga school of me, yeah, it's just being happy. Being happy. Having a being balance. Being happy? Yeah, being happy is being healthy for me, for me. 
I know it's, it's difficult to understand, but uh, if you're happy, uh, everything in you works perfectly, right? I mean, I mean if, if, you, if you deprive yourself of something, like you, like you're, uh, you deprive yourself of ice cream, you deprive yourself of lechon. I, uh, I'm not happy, and I'm not. I feel I don't. I'm, I don't. I feel I'm not healthy as well. If I, I work out, I do yoga, I eat whatever I want. Okay, mm -hmm. but if I don't do yoga, I don't eat whatever I want. So it's not. It's about. I think as long as I'm happy, I'm healthy. So I'm assuming you know the way you stay fit every day is to just go to as many Bikram yoga classes as you can. Just once, once too anything that's too much is bad. So once right. a day yoga, once a day yoga, and once a day I eat anything I want. Just stay happy for me. I, you know, I, it just made me laugh earlier when I heard you say happy because I remember so many times when I was in the hot room myself and, you know, these people mm -hmm. yoga classes last about an hour and a half and I am mm -hmm. so unhappy sometimes. Because <laughs> 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 it's a tough class, you know. But, yeah, okay, so that's your philosophy yeah. of yeah. health is being happy. happy. Okay. happy. I understand. All right. Noelle, what about you? What is your idea of healthy and what do you do every day to stay fit? I think um, being healthy means that everything works. Um, you know, your uh, all the body systems. Because both both my parents are doctors, so uh, yeah. yeah. Ever since, I mean, I've been schooled to you know, um, the heart needs to work properly. Um, you know, the lungs, everything else. So um, to stay healthy, anything that you can do to keep your body in tune, that's that's what I do. So um, well. I'm actually into triathlon as well, like Rosho. Um, so every day I probably do two workouts: uh, swim in the room, <laughs> or a bike and a swim, something like that. Wow. But it's it's not really um, it's not really about health anymore. It's it's about training for certain um, events. So, but but you can you can uh, you can get away with a 45 minute workout most days mm -hmm. if you're not training for anything. Right, right, right. Okay, what about you, Rocio? Are you are you training for you know a triathlon as well right now, or are you just um, kind of you know doing the chill every day working out thing? Actually, being a triathlete, you don't really need to be having a race all the time. But I think it's more of the lifestyle. So it's like the constant biking and running and swimming, and sometimes we do um, like strengthening of all that of that sort. But um, basically, to me, being healthy is the quality of life. Mm -hmm. It's um, knowing that your system works, just like what Noel said. And um, as my mom would always say, it's always everything in moderation. You can you can be loving to drink um, scotch or beer. Joaquin. Ah, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Whiskey yeah. yeah. I, think that's I mean, you know, I drink too, but it always has to be in moderation. I Everything yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Agree, okay. guys. Uh -huh. Agree, agree, agree. Agree. Everything balanced. Yes, agreed. Okay. So we should all drink. <laughs> After this hangout, yes. I but you know what I think? Um, I think basically, I mean, just, just kind of uh, getting inspiration from everybody. Yeah. Health is basically what you're, you have. A, you have a body, and um, health is what you do to maintain that body and that balance, mm -hmm. happiness, uh, your equilibrium. Whatever mm -hmm. it, it does to maintain that, then that's great. But we are exposed to things that we can't avoid that are detrimental to that body, and mm -hmm. that's why we are a little bit more proactive with our fitness, with our nutrition, mm -hmm. with our meditation, just so that um, we maintain that equilibrium, of making everything fit and in place. So. That's what I think. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that summary okay. of what everyone's idea of health and fitness is. Um, we're reminding everybody once again that you can join us uh, through Twitter. You can use the hashtag fit to live free. Hopefully, we can get to some of your questions later on in the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, right now, though, do you all agree to that wellness comes with a price? You know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, I, I heard somebody say yeah. Who was that? Uh, <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, I, 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 oh, my God. I guess Charles is going to tell me, oh, you go first, right? So. Yeah, you go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that, yeah. I, I think also because 
um, it comes with the times. Um, we're so exposed to again a lot of these elements that are that are quite harmful and that could be possibly detrimental to our health and our well-being. So because we're so exposed to it, and it's a necessity, we have to work, we have to live our lives, we have to be social beings, we have to go to and earn money. Um, now health becomes uh, pricey because we still need to maintain that um, equilibrium. And it comes at a price now because now having to work out, eating clean food is becoming uh, uh, a luxury. Uh, more and more um, because of all of this, you know, mass-produced, uh, a lot of the uh, chemicals into the food and processed food. So yeah. you need to now invest more in um, if what you feel is going to be more healthy and more uh, sustainable for the kind of life that you want to maintain. So for anybody who wants to answer this question, let me follow that up with why do you think the price uh, for wellness is worth it? Joaquin. <laughs> <laughs> well, because if you want to, if you want to live longer, if you want to take care of this body, it really depends on how much you're willing to invest in your body. Um, now, people can easily say, "Oh, you're so vain. Oh, you're so selfish. You're think of, thinking about yourself and your own well-being." But bottom line is, that's how much value I put into uh, wanting to live long, wanting to play with my kids long. I'm getting married and wanting to have a, you know, the rest of my life. Uh, with my family longer and more extended and to make more memories later on. So that's the investment I'm making in myself. Right. For those of you who don't know, Joaquin also describes himself as a full-time fiancé. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who else wants to answer this question? Uh, wellness comes with a price. Who wants to jump in? Me. I'll yes, Rocio. Okay. Basically, as I've said, it's quality. You know, health has a lot to do with quality. And... Yeah. Being healthy costs a lot of money. Like, just for me, being a triathlete, I want a nice bike, of course. I'm sure some of you would agree. And bikes are not cheap. They're not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> They're not. Wow. And uh, even, like, enrolling yourself in a yoga class. Or, yeah, Charles. Or <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. For sale for everyone today. <laughs> Yeah, and if you if you want to keep healthy, you got to drink vitamins. Mm -hmm. You have to choose the right food. You have to yep. less, lessen the the processed food. Mm -hmm. And um, buying all these organic stuff, they have specialized stores for it. And mm -hmm. those things are not cheap. Yes, it's a little so, ironic that we have to pay more money to get food in its original yeah. state. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Noel, Noel, you're a runner. I mean, I know you're training for the triathlon and everything, but you know, let's focus yeah, on yeah. with you. Maybe of the, you know, of all the guests that we have on today, uh, maybe running would seem the simplest of them all. Maybe the one that costs the least money. Do you agree, or you know, is it also like a pricey sort of hobby? Oh, you know, um, it can be scaled down or up depending on how much you're willing to spend on it, but. Um, at its simplest, running is really just lacing up. Or there are some people who run barefoot these days. So running is really just getting out of the house and and um, going down the road. Um, but it still has a price, and the price is time. You know, you still have to take that time to to run in the morning or find some time in the evening. And uh, you know, that's time that some other people will say, "Hey, you're not spending time with me. What are you doing?" Um, mm -hmm. I, Let's go out on Saturday night. I'm sorry, I have a race on Sunday morning, so I'm not going to be able to. And um, that, but that's a price I'm willing to pay because um, being able to be fit or and and or healthy just means that I can spend more time in the long run with these yes. people. I'm, okay. I'm it sounds like Noelle's had a fight or two with a boyfriend. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 but it's, um, you know, when you're doing a, um, the training towards a marathon, it's just really time-consuming, and so, right. yeah. Right. Okay, before we move on to the next question, let's take one from Twitter. This one is coming from Tom Stickney. Uh, do any of you meditate, and if so, how often? Anybody? Depends on you, I guess, classify meditation. Yeah, what kind of meditation? Uh, I I mean yeah I I do meditate like for instance if you're before a game or if you're about to compete in some some race or anything um you do find time maybe let it be five seconds or thirty seconds to just find yourself and, and focus in on what you're doing uh huh 
definitely do meditate. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yoga, we always meditate, right? You know, That's yoga, right. we always meditate, right? <laughs> Every time we're in Savasana. Exactly. And, I can't believe you didn't jump in and say hello, Bikram Yoga. That's an hour and a half of exactly. meditation. Meditation. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So there you go. Yeah, we meditate all the time, but uh, there's always different in our in our in our in our in our class in our yoga. It's uh, there's a lot of types of meditation. In in Bikram Yoga, it's like when you use the Vasa, you just reflect on what you've done, uh, your class for today, what you did for today. Simple. Uh, for meditation. Others we don't do the out of the body meditation type. So, but we do meditate, right? Yeah. Right, it, right. It relaxes us. It relaxes us a lot. Mm -hmm. Does it, Sam? Does it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, anybody want to add to this meditation thing? I think um, I think fitness is really just uh, as much as it is a body thing. It's also a mind thing. So you mm -hmm. really have just like, as what Noel said. Um, you really have to have that time to focus on yourself, to really internalize. Um, whether you're doing something absolutely relaxing as yoga, well, it's not really relaxing. I'm not <laughs> one of those <laughs> or, or something as high intensity as CrossFit, it really, mm -hmm. you need to go into the cachet of your mind and you're always going to be able to, you're always going to hit the wall. There's going to be a time, I th I'm sure the triathlete will also agree. You're, you're going to hit the wall and you, you're going to be demotivated. You're going to be so um, discouraged and, uh, and distracted. And you, you need to have that capacity to go into a zone where it's just you. And it's, it's a razor-sharp focused mind. And mm -hmm. meditation does that. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's move on now to um, inspiring other people by the things that you do, you know, and the way you stay fit. And I think, I think all of us, you know, in the age of social media, uh, whether you like it or not, are kind of inspiring people, you know, setting an example, at least to the people that follow you or the people around you, right? Um, why do you think it's important for you uh, to inspire or help other people stay fit? Joaquin, you're number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, I, I, used to, uh, I used to not feel too nice about being clumped into this millennial generation, but I really have to come to terms with it and accept it. And one of the benefits and uh, probably a curse to some people about being a millennial is that you're so exposed. Your life is exposed. People know um, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I decided, you know, I'll use that. People know exactly what my, my, my life is like, what I'm, what I'm doing, and I'll use that to, to, as an opportunity, as a pedestal to influence. If, if my life can actually help encourage someone, if it can change their mindset, if they can, ins if it inspires them to be the better version of themselves, then you know, bring it socially. You know, then you know, social media, bring it on, right? And that's that's what that's that's what Instagram does um, for me. Social networks does does for me. When people come up to me, whom they introduce themselves and say, "Hey, I follow you, and I really, you know, I really follow you, your." You know your, your fitness advice or whatever your nutrition advice, then that's great. Then I actually helped someone. What about you, Kit? I feel like maybe, you know, there's um, the the inspiration angle is all the more real for you because you are in the national team. You know, you are a Philippine volcano. Is it important to you that you get to inspire other people? You're a trainer as well. Sorry, can you repeat the question? It was just choppy for a second there. That was a really long question, man. <laughs> I feel like, you know, because you are part of the Philippine team, you know, the Philippine rugby team, um, this, this inspiring other people angle is very real for you. You know, is it, an, is it important for you that you're inspiring people? You're also a, a CrossFit trainer. You know, how important it is, is it that you are helping other people stay fit as well? Um, I think it as is very important to help motivate others and to inspire others. Um, I think there are a lot of people out there today that, you know, um, they can find themselves in ruts, um, and usually they find themselves, you know, placid, or they find themselves in the situation where um, they have no idea how to how to deal with it. I mean, regardless of whatever situation it is, okay. Um, and fitness is also about improving your quality of life, okay. So if you could pass on this knowledge to other people and help them. Or, or to lift them up in, in any way possible, um, that alone, you know, it really makes me happy. Um, it really it really helps me. Um, for instance, I mean, all of us are in fitness for a reason, okay? Um, 
And when we improve our quality of life, not only do we like decrease our depression, we increase our confidence, we, it, it helps in, in all aspects of our lives. Um, so it, it, it holistically helps us um, in other situations in our lives, not just in fitness alone, not just in you know, the physiology of being able to lift a lot more, um, but you know, in all aspects of life, from business all the way to your relationships, I think it really helps out. What about you, Charles? I'm sure a lot of people come up to you after a yoga class and say, you know, that was amazing, I feel, I feel great. You know, how important is that aspect for you? Well, it's self-fulfilling. I mean, it's, it's much like a passion, right? You're happy because uh, people say, wow, that was an awesome class, and they want to come back again, they want to stay fit, they want to stay, it's, of course you're happy. But on, on top of that, uh, it's, it's sharing what you know, sharing how the yoga will help you, how the yoga will help you live longer, uh, have a better quality of life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the financial fitness aspect of all this, you know, because all of you are obviously independent professionals, you make a living off of being fit, you know, if you're just joining us, Charles has a yoga studio, a couple actually, uh, Joaquin used to co-own a gym and he is still very much a health enthusiast, Noel runs a successful website and is a regular marathoner like Rocio, who is a triathlete, and Kit is a national athlete and CrossFit trainer, so let's Talk about what you learned from the business side of these things. Um, how do you manage your finances? Is that like too? <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe uh, we can maybe we can kind of customize this question. You know, depending on what you do. Uh, say walk in. You know, yeah. like tell yeah. us your financial situation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I'm actually worth. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not very much. <laughs> I think right now it's really about um, what I, how I look at my money is really, uh, and thankfully I'm engaged to someone who really, you know, cracks down on how I spend my money. But uh, basically, I, I I put value in what I think is an investment, and it's not necessarily uh, a return that's going to come back as money but it's a return that's going to come back to you, period, that you can take with you for a longer time. So if I'm investing in um, my nutrition service, my, my fitness service, um, if I'm investing in rest, if I'm investing in experiences, and I try and work so that I don't uh, kill myself working just for the buck. I try and work so that my investments that are rounded and not just financial uh, have a return. Okay, interesting that you bring up investments. We'll yeah. you know, go into detail a little bit yeah. about that later on. But uh, let's move on now to Kit. You know, uh, how do you manage your finances? What does that look like? For you? Oh, he's really rich. So he. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in Colossal, we have a term, um, and it goes, I guess, for a lot of sports, it's efficiency. Okay. Um, it's efficiency in your movement, and this can be applied just in, into into daily life, right? So efficiency in how you spend things. Um, you can definitely be efficient using a brand, would say that you might not know, but it has the same you know benefits of a brand that's more known. These type of things. Um, so looking for bang for your buck is what I really go for. And you know, I mean, aside from that, in order to keep myself afloat, I'm not going to say that I'm rich like Joaquin said, but I uh, <laughs> keep myself afloat. I do have a day job, so I'm in advertising, and then I, I do play rugby, and then I, I part own a gym or a CrossFit gym, and then just a little plug here if you see this brand, um, that's BroFit. Yeah. yeah. What is it again? What is it? It's called BroFit. You notice the mustache. BroFit. Okay. Bro-fit. Anyways, yeah, yeah so I, I definitely diversify the pro- my. You see how he just puffed up his chest and, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it's really about it for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, Noel, you know, it's interesting to me that, you know, you have a blog. A lot of people uh, actually have blogs. I have a blog myself. Yeah. And, you know, how, what is the financial aspect of the whole blogging thing? Mm, well, you know what? I don't directly make money, a lot of money off the blog. I, I used it as a portfolio at the Snag project. So I'm currently writing. I'm a content writer for a professional triathlon team. So they're, they're not based in the Philippines, obviously. But um, yeah, and I also provide services for a number of other websites. So uh, the blog, 
the, all of the things that I'm still doing are health and fitness related. The blog was just um, like a portfolio to help me snag those projects. I see. Yeah. And Charles, Charles, you. You're you gonna make lots of money. Too much money. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, kidding, kidding. No, it's, it's different for me. Uh, when you operate a studio, you have uh, overhead expenses, you have to pay teachers, you have to pay water, you have to pay electricity. That's a lot of things to consider. So you have to work always efficiently, uh, cut down costs, uh, maximize profit. Uh, but on top of that, uh, well, become yoga is a good brand. It's doing very well. Okay. Rafi, you are a financial advisor, so I mean, you know, are you going to let us in a little bit on how you manage your finances so that we can get a, you know, a tip or two? Okay. How does that happen for you? Um, basically, well, because of my lifestyle, I want to be able to maintain my lifestyle. So, um, with the money that I earn every month, I do I put aside a portion of it all the time, like a monthly. Um, I invest it in um, mutual funds or stocks. And um, I'm very happy with the earnings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't there even a number? For, like, what is it, like 20% or something like that of your income you're supposed to put away? Or do you um, subscribe to something like that? No, I just put like a certain amount every month, mm. what I'm comfortable with. And if ever I have more, then I add more. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's a very sound thing to do with your money. But, you know, obviously not a lot of people, I no. think, are <laughs> able to do that or even yeah. think to do that. Um, what are the typical illnesses that Filipinos have when it comes to building their wealth, you think? Um, for me, I think number one is procrastination. Being lazy, okay. Yeah. What do I, you think, mean? I think basically, um, you know you need to save money. Um, my parents used to tell me it's not the amount of money you earn, but it's the amount of money you save. And basically, you know you need to save, and yet you just don't do it. But maybe it's also lack of knowledge on um, where to put it. Some people just park their money in um, institutions that don't really earn money for them. Mm -hmm. So they continue to work like a dog, and then at the same time, their money is just the same all throughout. So um, I've learned that um, setting aside that money on a regular basis and investing it and making it work for you builds your retirement because basically um, you always say okay I want this much this amount at my age of retirement say 65 or 60 and then you get it five years from your retirement which obviously you won't be able to attain so you procrastinate mm. but if you get it like 20 years prior to your retirement then obviously it's gonna happen right right okay anything else so number one is procrastination the illnesses? Yes, yes. Um, you know how, um, like, it's so simple. You work, and then you make your child work, and then you ask money from your children to support you in the end. Like there's some kind of insurance policy when you have children. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you yeah. make them work, and you expect them to actually support you when you're old. And old meaning 45, which is not even old. <laughs> So, I mean, it's been happening in the Filipino families, and um, it's sad. Mm -hmm. um, you all seem to be, you know, uh, you all seem to know or, or have a really good grasp of, you know, your finances, but I want to know what you think uh, is being financially fit. Like, how would you define that? Who wants to go first? Charles. Oh. <laughs> 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 now, Charles. Charles, Charles, go, Charles. Okay, okay. Uh, for me, uh, financially fit is yeah. having enough, enough for you to use every day, uh, enough for you to spend when you're, for the, enough for you to have for the rest of your life. Hanggang mamatay ka na, you have enough money for that. That's financially fit for me. Wow. So being you, maybe more than maybe more than enough for you to eat out uh, in uh, Melos, to eat out, uh, to go to Boracay, that's financially fit, because it makes me happy. All about the happiness. Now you know what uh, Charles does <laughs> to be happy. Eat out and go to Boracay. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, um, uh, Noel? Let's go to Noel. Um, be financially fit? Yeah. Um, for me, means that you have enough for what you want to do now, but you also are providing for yourself in the future. 
if or when um, your current uh, streams cut um, off or um, change that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I think it's just also extending. If I mean, if if we we work out and we eat right to extend your life, being financially fit is also so that you can extend that life. And um, it really boils down to how long you see yourself living and into what standard you want to live in. And once you have that vision, then you kind of can prepare and take care of your finances accordingly. If you're just living day to day, then, uh, you know, carpe diem, you know, let's just eat whatever we want and do whatever we want. And go to, <laughs> <laughs> then it kind of tells you now, okay, I'm just going to save up so that tomorrow I can eat something and whatever. But if you want to think about long term, if you want to build a family, build a future, then you got to work your wallet just as much as you work your body. That's a fiancé talking up. That's right. Well, ask, ask me this before I got engaged. I'm like, no, whatever. <laughs> what about you, kid? What do you think it needs to be financially fed? Oh, well, for me, I'm kind of determined to make sure that I don't have to worry about finance later on. So that's my goal. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's really impressive. All of you have this foresight, you know, factor when it comes to being financially fit. It's about planning for today and making sure that you're covered for the rest of your day, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, earlier, I think was it Joaquin who mentioned um investing, right? That was you, Joaquin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, um, Rocio over here talked about putting money away in stocks and whatnot. So basically, investing also. Are any of you, the rest of you, you know, investing your money in other things as well? Maybe passive or alternative means of income. You know, what's that picture? Can you paint it for us? I guess nobody is investing. <laughs> <laughs> and Rocio, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I have a financial advisor from Sun Life and. Uh, um, I recently bought the few policies that helped me um, basically pr protect the value of my, my money. So if you leave yeah. money in your bank accounts, in your ATMs, it uh, really doesn't account for inflation. And um, the, the value or what your 1,000 pesos can buy now won't be able to buy the same thing in, in the future. So, yes. yeah, so I, I put some of my stuff into um, long-term investments. Really, a lot of it is... Um, for retirement, or if I need, uh, if if I'm not using this uh, this amount, I might as well just put it away somewhere that I can't touch it. <laughs> okay. What about you, Kip or, or Charles? Any investment? Uh, for me, well, my money is uh, as much as possible right now. Uh, let's say for the yoga, if it makes like uh, let's say a hundred thousand a month. I put like 20,000. Uh, example, example, example. Uh, say 100%. I put 20% uh, in savings, 80% back into the business. Because I plan to open more studios in the future, somewhere else. I just, I'm just making a <laughs> for that. Maybe somewhere in uh, in Batangas or somewhere or somewhere. Well, people are, have been asking me. So hopefully put in more studios in the future. Of course, 20% savings, 80%. And then on top of that, of course, investment bonds, UITF, uh, uh, SDAs, yeah, lots of investments as well. Okay. My, no, my nose is bleeding. Let's move on to I know what you guys do. You know your job. I'm sure you do it because you find it rewarding, right? Uh, tell us about what makes it so rewarding for you. Let's go back to our normal sequence, Joaquin. Okay. Well, my, my, my day job is actually filmmaking. I'm in advertising, so I direct commercials for a living and um, direct everything that's audiovisual. Um, it's very fulfilling, but also very um, taxing physically. There's a lot of stress that's involved, a lot of late nights, um, and I love it. And that's why I invested in my fitness and in my health, because I want to sustain that kind of passion. And that, and that's not my baby, is it? Um, okay. No, it's my sister's baby. Okay, okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, so that's why I wanted to invest in my in my fitness because I wanted to sustain the passion and the drive and the creative process that I I like maintaining for my work. Um, and it it's fine. It sustained me because I cleaned up my nutrition because I've I've exercised regularly. I think that long nights are more sustainable and more um, enduring. Now I can endure them more. My stamina is much better. 
and I'm I'm a much more uh, efficient and much more useful person on the set than I was when I wasn't taking care of my health. I like what you did there. Let's talk about the rewards of your job and what makes your job challenging as well. So, yeah, can you answer that for us? Yeah. So I mean, uh, similar to Joaquin, actually, I have a day job. So I, I am in advertising. So. Um, in terms of the nerd self in me, in terms of the creative self, I guess that is my outlet as well. Um, it's fulfilling in the self, in, in itself because I get this idea transferred into something material. Okay, so this is outside of fitness. Um, you get to see, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something that's written on paper, and you get to see it on TV. You know what I mean? Like you don't really get that in a lot of other industries, I believe, um, and that's what I fell in love with in terms of the nerd slash creative self. Now the jock side, I mean, it's totally different. I guess that's that's where I find the balance um, in terms of the uh, detrimental, I guess, detrimental health point that advertising comes with in terms of staying, staying overtime, waiting for clients, and doing all those things. Um, I guess the fitness aspect has helped me find that balance and the positivity to keep on going in terms of following my different passions. Charles, rewards versus challenges running a Bikram Yoga Studio. Rewards. Rewards of well, the money. The this is the reward, and at the same time, you get to inspire people. Uh, challenges. Well, uh, running the studio because of the teachers, but uh, on top of that, it's just me, it just makes me happy. I, I like I told you, uh, the yoga is what I used to do a lot of uh, family business before uh, twenty early twenties. So my back really got bad. So to a point that I wasn't able to get up. And then the yoga healed me. I just want to do it forever. I just want to do it forever. And at the same time, that's my reward. I just want to do it forever. Extra learning pera. Extra learning I get to inspire people. And it's just, it's just a perfect setup for me. Noelle, running a uh, running blog. <laughs> running blog. Running blog. Uh, rewards and challenges. Um, uh, the challenges are sometimes I don't have enough time to... Um, to write stuff for the running blog because, uh, like I said, I campaign for certain projects and I end up writing a lot for those projects and uh, not enough for my blog. But um, the rewards are that when I do, it reaches, you know, um, the audience for the stuff that I do for work is um, international, but the audience for my blog is the Philippines. And of course, you know, that's closest to my heart. And um, if I can help anyone or inspire anyone to make that change in their life for the better, then, you know, that is that that is my reward. Um, I love when people come up to me and say that, you know, they ins I inspired them to get off their couches and run their first 5K. Or somebody said that I, I was afraid of taking the first step towards a marathon, but you know, reading your experience about it, um, I've decided to sign up for something. So that's that to me is my reward. Mm -hmm. What about you, Rocio? Financial advisor and a triathlete at the same time, rewards and challenges? Um, for me, I think the reward comes with uh, how I am now and my fitness level now and um, the money that I have put aside and that has earned for me. At the same time, the challenge is um, just like an athlete, the discipline of um, teaching people how to constantly put aside that money to be able to have that reward in the end for their just preparing for their retirement, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. We're so close to wrapping up this. Um, wrap up but before we do that, do you have anybody who wants to throw out advice out there? Maybe someone who's looking into starting, you know, a business in fitness or starting a blog on fitness. Anybody? Blog. Well. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm, I'm starting a blog on fitness, any kind of um, fitness activity. And the first rule is you have to love it. You have to love it absolutely. It has to be who you are. It has to be na come naturally to you. Um, you know, um, they say that if you're if you're overflowing with um, love for a certain something, you just you know you naturally want to tell others about it. And so that's the most important part of starting a blog. Anybody in the fitness business, like the physical business side of things, any advice from you guys? Go, Charles. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, well, the yoga, the yoga industry, it's it's growing. Uh, lots of uh, yoga studios come uh, popping up right and left. 
Uh, but still, it's an it's a, it's a industry that there's a huge potential for it. It's the safest way to get fit, uh, a non-impact sports. Uh, so it's for everyone from 12 to 105. Uh, so if you want to go into the to the business, I mean, it's, it's a great business to be in. What are you guys into right now? You know, very quickly before we really say goodbye. You know, uh, any upcoming activities for you? Where we can find you next? You know, Joaquin. Uh, well, basically online, I'm doing a lot of work uh, this month, uh, directing a lot of stuff. But more importantly, I'm directing uh, the concert of the company, the 30th anniversary concert of the company, right here in the theater in Solaire. That's why I'm here right now in this beautiful cafe. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I, I'm going to jump on to what uh, you were asking, Sam. You know, fitness and actually financial fitness is overwhelming. Um, it can get overwhelming, but the hardest day is the first day. Once you get over that first day of uh, deciding to work out or deciding to go and run your first, I don't know, 500 meters or one kilometer uh, or deciding to start saving, that's really the first day, you know, uh, hurdle. Once you get over that, it should get a little bit more enjoyable. If not easier, more enjoyable. So that's my, my advice is to just jump in. Um, I'm also like uh, working with um, a nutrition delivery service called iChef concepts and solutions and uh, basically we tailor fit the diet for you guys um, based on your goals and uh, we always tell our clients what do you want to happen to your body and it's almost like a counseling thing and um, Kit is one of our guys and uh, you know and, and they, all, they have all these problems and all of these uh, hesitations and um, sometimes it helps that we walk them through it and we just tell them get over the first day and it gets easier then. What about you Kit? What are you up to? Where do we find you? Uh, if you want to find me tonight, I'll be DJing at Raven. Um, but <laughs> that aside, uh, I'll be gearing up for the, for the Rugby Sevens um, this coming August. So that's for the national team. Uh, hopefully, I'll make the starting roster. But if not, you'll be finding me also powerlifting at a couple of events because I do hold the national records for the deadlift here. Um, yeah, we already know that. But <laughs> um, other than that, I, I'll jump onto it as well. I think I think in terms of any investment or any business plan, aside from jumping into it, you do definitely have to have that passion. Um, without the passion, it'll be a lot harder for you to go through the growing pains. It'll be a lot harder for you to take the next steps that you need to take in order to grow that investment. Um, yeah. Okay. Charles, where do we find your Yoga Studios? There. One in Quezon City, one in Three Hills. The <laughs> <laughs> sketch is there. Uh, <laughs> you can always catch me there. <laughs> okay, I hope our viewers caught that one. <laughs> um, Noelle, please tell us more. Where, where can we find your blog? It's kikairunner.com, right? Yes, it's kikairunner.com. I'm also very active on Facebook and on Twitter, so you can follow me at kikairunner. Um, the race that I'm training for is Challenge Kamsur. It's a triathlon happening in Kamsur on June 14th. After that, uh, my next run is um, the Takmo.ph Run Fest. So that's on July 12th. Um, we're raising funds for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Very nice. Rosito, tell us yes. where, we, where we can find you. Um, I'm very active in the social media like Facebook and Instagram. And of course, in Sun Life, you can find me there. But most often than not, you can see me in the training courses, uh -huh, uh -huh. more in the south, though, and um, in the races. And um, I think one thing I should um, that really inspires me is really the discipline of um, teaching people just like an athlete. is It's never too late to start anything. Just like I'm not young. I started triathlon six years ago. And um, just like in saving money for your finances, it's also never too late to do that. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining hey, us today. Thanks for having hey, us. Thank you. We all started out, you know, asking you guys which one would you choose, health or wealth. And after talking about your passion, your business, and your financial fitness, I feel like at the end of it that it is possible to have health and wealth, yeah. <laughs> and at the same time too. So thank you so much for thank the you. inspiration, thank and you. thank all of you. Uh, for joining us on this Rappler Hangout. 
There's more coming up, so keep it tuned in to Rappler.com. My name is Sam O. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Yeah. Is that done? Is that, okay. Are we done? Work. Work. Work.